All right, today we're here again with uh, that energy guy, Mark Kapner. And uh, we were talking before about solar panels on churches and synagogues. And we discussed a little bit about the um, solar batteries uh, on churches. Uh, solar batteries that can store energy um, on the churches during the off-peak periods. And so uh, we want to talk about the size and scale of the solar panels today. Um, Mark had discussed this uh, earlier. We're just going to recap that. So. Uh, tell us a little bit about the size, uh, Mark, about the size and scale of uh, the solar panels uh, on churches and synagogues. Okay, uh, let's start with the solar panels. Um, the uh, size or the area of a typical solar power system on a, a synagogue or a church or a mosque that we're interested in pursuing uh, occupies an area of roughly 100 square uh, 100 feet by 100 feet that would be a area of 10,000 square feet it doesn't have to be a square it could be a rectangle it could be several areas which uh, added together equals uh, 10,000 square feet the size of the battery system for a typical church or synagogue or mosque, uh, you know, we're talking about large buildings. Uh, that's very compact. The battery system basically would come in a, uh, a container. Typical measurement of a container such as this would be a, a six feet by six feet area and typically also about six feet high. So basically it's a cube six feet by six feet by six feet. Now, uh, to repeat, how do these two elements, the solar and the battery, how do they save money for the church? Well, they do it in two ways. The solar panel saves money by getting a credit on the bill of the customer, a credit equal to the amount of solar energy produced it's measured in kilowatt hours and it's metered and that number is multiplied times the price that Austin Energy we're only working in Austin right now uh, the price that Austin Energy values solar uh, it happens to be 11.7 cents other utilities value solar in a different way so you take the quantity of energy produced over a month, you multiply it times that value of solar price, and that gives you a credit of the electric bill. The credit may at some times be greater than the bill itself, in which case the extra credit carries over to the next month, and the customer has no electric bill for that particular month. Now, the battery does something different. First, let me point out that uh, the way that bills are calculated for houses of worship, as well as other commercial, as well as commercial buildings, is the following. There's an energy component, which I've just talked about. That's the product of a quantity of energy times a price. That's one component of the bill. Call that the energy component. There's another component of the bill called the demand component, and that's calculated by, account by measuring the maximum rate of usage of the building. It measured in kilowatts. It's a rate, a rate of energy per unit time, and that maximum demand, peak demand it's called, is multiplied times another price, which is measured in dollars per kilowatt per month. 
The two components add together to create your total electric bill. The solar panels, as I've said, they give you a credit on your bill based on the quantity of energy produced by the solar multiplied times the value of solar price. The battery reduces the peak demand, and that reduced peak demand is multiplied times the kilowatts uh, charge, the dollars per kilowatt per month charge. So how do batteries reduce peak demand? It's very simple. They are charged up during periods of low demand, and they discharge only at the time of day that the church or synagogue or mosque are likely to reach their maximum demand. They do this every day during that time that we know the church will see its peak demand, thereby reducing its peak demand, thereby saving money on the demand charge portion of the bill. And these two savings add together, and that's how it works. Okay, awesome. All right, we are talking to Mark Kapner, founder of Kapner Solar Energy and the Kapner Solar Energy Initiative. We are uh, going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about the efficiency of solar energy.